prepare ourselves to go a little bit higher today. Um, we are in we are in a series. We're in a series called the Christmas List, and the Christmas List is about reordering our priorities. Okay, and so a lot of times around Christmas. Um, we get all distorted, we get all bent out of shape, we always are trying to um, um, work on, we're more focused on what we might get for someone versus what the true meaning of Christmas is all about. And so for this particular series, I thought it would be good for us to really deal with because it'll get us prepared for what's coming in 2020. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like everybody I talk to different and it's, and it's not even uh, it's different cultures, it's different socioeconomic backgrounds, but everybody is anticipating 2020 a little bit differently than 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 uh, in years past. First of all, 2020 is we get ready to switch over into a new decade, okay? And so uh, uh, 2020 is 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 about a lot of people are doing stuff around vision and clarity and things of that sort. Um, to give you a preview, the 2020 thing for Chosen G is going to be shift. It's the year of shift, the year of shifting. And so we are going to be what pretty much in between gears, but we're going to shift from one lower gear to a higher gear. And so shifting comes before your next, okay? And when you get to your next, you've already gone through your shift, which means you've already gone through your transition. You've already gone through uh, um, your, your change, so to speak. And so this particular series that we're dealing with, sermon series that we're dealing with, is about priorities. And that's something that I feel like all of us have difficulty with because we don't know how to prioritize our lives. And some of you all are better than others. Uh, I think I've shared with you that the reason why uh, Lady Karen handles our finances is because I can't figure out priorities. I understand everybody need to get paid, but um, I don't want to pay everybody right now. <laughs> My priority is if it comes down to paying the bills and we go to Acapulco's on Taco Tuesday, uh, where drinks are now, that were once seven, are now $4, then I'm going to Acapulco's. Everybody coming, y'all like tacos? Let's roll and get some tacos. Not thinking about that the Edison bill is due. You understand what I'm saying? And that I'm not going to be there when the gas man comes. I'm going to be at work. Therefore, she's got to entertain the gas man. If you have ever had a phone call while you're in a meeting and your wife is on the other end or, or significant other is on the other end frantic because there's a utility guy at the front door, I tell you, it's, it's more like a reality show than it is a, a, a Dallas episode, old school. You understand what I'm saying? It's like love and hip hop combined with uh, uh, the jump off. I don't know. It's oh something real God. crazy because what she's saying, I'm trying to keep a straight face while I'm in the meeting. So. Priority. Some of us have poor priorities. In this series, we need to figure out how to prioritize our respective lives. The gifts are important. The tree is important. But who hung on the tree is far more important Amen. than what you could put underneath the tree. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? So as we go today, we're going to go and we're going to look at one of the Gospels. We're going to be in one of the Gospels. The Gospel... Uh, of Matthew today, the gospel of Matthew today. We're going to be in chapter number one. We're going to be in chapter number one. We're going to look at verses 18 to 20, 25. Matthew chapter one, verses 18 to 25. It should be on the screen behind me. Please stand for the reading of the word of God. Matthew chapter one, verses 18 to 25. Verse 18 says, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, which means engaged, to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Under underline that. But as he considered these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Jesus, when, excuse me, when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. The title of today's message is Don't Leave Before the Credits. Don't leave before the credits. Don't leave before the credits. When we, when we, when we, how many people, how many people, what was, what was, what was, just taking a real quick poll, what was the last movie that you saw? What was the last movie that you saw? Because I don't go to movies, so, I mean, by the time I go to the movie, movies on Netflix, Harry. I'm chilling. Harriet. Harriet. Okay, so Harriet. Anybody, anybody else? Anybody else go see a movie? Joker. Okay, I heard about that one. Joker, Harriet. Anybody else? I thought y'all lived your best lives, man. I thought I was going to go to movies. I don't take what no movies. I don't go to movies. Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, that's that, that one. That's the one with The Rock, right? Yeah, that was really I saw that the other day. Yeah, I like that. The fact, yeah, Fast and Furious. See, I like action. I want you to come in with the bang, bang, bang. Let's go. Let's get to it. I don't like no slow-paced dramas. Oh, okay. All right. Come on with it. I need to come with the heat. Okay, Hobbs and Shaw, Harriet, and The Joker. Okay, so I've learned over the years from watching um, movies, and I've also learned it at concerts, too. So one one concert me and Karen went to, uh, I don't know if it was Mays or if it was Kim or somebody, we went to see and they left the stage. You know, they had done their encore and everything. And so some people sat there and were still, you know, just really basting, basting in the concert, the experience. And so we started clapping like, we want more, we want more. Anyway, uh, it may have been, I'm sorry, it was Jill Scott. Jill Scott came back out and then sang another, I don't know, four or five songs after the after she had left the stage and some people had left. And the thing comment that she made was, she said, see, these are my real fans. Because you, we just stood there and waited because we wanted more of what she had to give. The other thing I've learned by watching movies, if you're not a big Marvel fan, you never leave mm -hmm. at the final scene. Nope. Because if you leave at the final scene before you actually see the credits, you're going to miss a key part that's going to lead you into what the next movie is going to be about. Um, a lot of people, when they went to see Black Panther, left at the end, not realizing there was a key scene at the end that was going to tie the whole thing together and set you up for the Avengers series, the movies that came out. Sometimes in life, we walk away from stuff before waiting on the credits. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to walk out of a scene not realizing that we should stay in the scene and wait for the credits to roll. Some of us don't understand that at the end of the day, we have to position ourselves to where in uh, 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 we have to understand that there are priorities in life that, are, that need to be played out before we start grumbling and, and, and whining about our circumstances. And so when, when, when we look at it, a lot of times, a lot of times, and we've changed over the years because we have older children. Um, right now, uh, Lady K and I are in a, we're in a different season of life. So our scenes are shifting. You understand what I'm saying? We're, we're ending a chapter this week. The children celebrate, our youngest children celebrated 19 years of being on this earth. And we're just really excited <laughs> because in 2020, they're going to turn 20, which means they're closer to that proverbial. <laughs> That Some of y'all will catch that later on. <laughs> They're closer to that. <laughs> Call or text before you come by. Okay, thank you very much. What are our priorities now? But when you get to Christmas, 
we always get into this rush of what is our main priority? Traffic gets bad. People get a little bit more irritable. We can't get to the mall and get what we want to get. We got to work crazy hours on the job. People, you know, everything, family's coming in town, or you know that that's one family that you don't want to be bothered with. Got to get together. It's just a lot of different things. So, 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 the question on the floor is, what are your priorities during the Christmas season? Uh, some of you probably have a list of things you must get done or focus on, uh, buying gifts, family pictures, asking for time off for vacation, getting the food ready. The list can go on and on. Our priorities can go on and on during the season as well. The question we must ask is if we're prioritizing the wrong thing. The other day, Cynthia, I was sitting at the, at the, on the, at the, I was sitting looking at the TV, and you know, one of the channels on the cable now, they run all the Christmas movies. So the other day, I had a fun time. I looked at the, the Christmas movie when Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was, had to go find this toy for his son, and that he was, it, it was him and Sinbad, and they got, a, they got into a fight and all that kind of stuff. I was watching that movie, and then my favorite one is uh, uh, The Lampoon's Vacation with Chevy Chase, when he put the lights on, he decorated the house in a bazillion lights and they don't come on because he didn't turn the switch. Great movie. I watch that every year. Then I was looking at uh, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles with Steve Martin to where he was trying to get home for Christmas and he missed his flight. He wind up hooking up with John Candy and they wind up staying in a, a rundown hotel and with one bed. And I mean, it was crazy. I like those kind of movies. And so the other day, the other day, the other day, Cynthia, I was watching the 2000 film version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. I need y'all to know that I laughed like I was watching that movie for the first time. I mean, I laughed so hard, I think I pulled a muscle in my kidney and I couldn't sleep right that night because I was tickled. I said, how old have I gotten where I'm laughing at movies like it's the first time? I mean, I had a good old time by myself. I don't know where Lady Cameron was. I think she was at work or something. I just decided to stay at home and have a Netflix and chill moment because I was not having a good emotional health day. Some of y'all will understand that later on. Some of you, some of y'all, okay. Emotional health day means that sometimes you gotta close the blinds and just lock yourself in and get you a good little thing, a drink, and some popcorn and have Netflix because you need a me, I need a me day. I don't need no friends, I don't need no friends, I need a me day. You understand what I'm saying? I need a me engaged, I wanna be with me and my thoughts. I'm watching this movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. One of the main questions asked throughout the movie is, what is the meaning of Christmas? The character Cindy Lou Who <laughs> asked everyone in Whoville <laughs> why she should celebrate this day. As she observes her family and friends, she says that their priorities on Christmas are all about gifts, status, perfection, and again, gifts. When all the stuff is taken away from Whoville, the Who's and the Grinch realize that the priority of Christmas is love, family, and friends. The story of the nativity scene scenes, uh, shows us that even people in the Bible have priority issues. But God had other plans. When we meet Joseph, we see that he is going through, uh, he's going to divorce Mary. This wasn't because Joseph was a bad person, because he was a righteous man. Joseph, therefore, could not in conscience marry Mary, who was thought to be unfaithful. Joseph's practical priority was taking care of his reputation and even Mary's reputation. You got to understand that during this time period, you could not be married to someone who was already with child. During this time period, if you were engaged to a person, that meant that you could not, uh, 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 how, could, how do they call it now, consummate the marriage before you said, I do. And so we see Joseph here in a quandary because the woman that he loves is with child and Joseph knows good and well he did not lie with her. Which means Joseph is going through the, what I call the mechanics in his mind of trying to figure out who done lay with my future wife? Joseph was trying to figure out what is it that I'm going to do because this woman is with child and anybody that does the mathematics will understand that it's not my child because we have yet to say I do. 
And so the funny thing is that Joseph finds himself in the predicament that I think I find myself in quite often when I tell people that I have five children. And they always say, well, how old is your oldest? I say, my oldest is 33. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, how old are you? I said, I'm 47. And all of a sudden, you see them go through this Jeopardy musical of do 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 And then how old is your other oldest? My, my other son is 20, 28. <laughs> and you got how old are the triplets? Oh, they nineteen. <laughs> oh, okay. And then finally, when I just want to just break the ice, I say my two oldest are our children from a previous. Oh, okay. We were really trying to figure out how do you have a thirty-three-year-old daughter and you forty-seven? <laughs> that meant that you had to have her. I know, I know. Just stop right. yourself. Slow right. down. Quiet your insides. Quiet your insides. <laughs> Joseph was trying to figure out how was he going to tell the people that Mary had a child on the way when the people and he knew that he had not consummated their marriage. We living in a time period to where it wasn't cool for a single woman to be with child because she got looked upon as almost being a harlot or almost being someone who was unclean. So we see Joseph. We see Joseph. He had a tough decision. In a social sense, Joseph would be facing a shameful situation. People would either assume he was marrying someone who has been unfaithful to him or that Joseph and Mary had a baby out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. And most of us, if we go back through our families, and we may not even have to go that far, just deal with yourself. <laughs> did you realize that your parents were not married when you were conceived and therefore when, you, when your mother gave birth to you, you were, they were not holy matrimony. That's out of wedlock. Now you have to realize that we still live in a day and time to where there are some people in society, some folks in church, some folks that are in pulpits, some folks that call themselves holy and righteous that now will not accept children that are born out of wedlock. But the funny thing is that how do you not accept the child born out of wedlock when Jesus himself? So the question is, how can you love Jesus but you can't love that child? Lest we forget <laughs> everything that we go through in our family, Jesus experienced in his own. So we see Joseph here trying to make a rational decision. And I feel my brother Joseph. I do. I feel him because he's trying to figure out what do I do to get out of this situation? Because the scenario is not going to turn out right. So both scenarios could cause serious damage to the reputations at the time. Now you got to realize they had to get up out of town first of all because the king was doing a, a census report. He wanted to know how many male children were going to be in who were already born and how many were yet to be born in the city because he wanted to destroy all the male children. So they were already on the run and now Joseph finds himself on the run with Mary and now he finds out the Holy Spirit has impregnated her and he's trying to deal with all of this and he's like, at the end of the day, Joseph is like, me and you, I throw my hands up, I don't want to deal with this no more. That was his priority. But the priority that God placed on Joseph was more important than any of Joseph's priorities. So this is what I want you to understand. If you don't get anything else out of the message today, I want you to understand that sometimes, uh, 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 and I'm going to give you this for free, sometimes God will hijack your priorities. Mm -hmm. Your priorities is one thing, God has something else on the agenda. Mm -hmm. You plan to go to school, God wanted you to go to work. You plan not to get married until you was 35, God had you married at 27. God's priorities change and God will hijack your priorities. If you ever want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. Understand, God has other plans. God has something else for you. And because God has something else for you, you find yourself in situations that you had not planned for. And because you didn't plan for them, you couldn't set priorities. That's why you find yourself sitting across the lunch table with somebody that's going to be able to give you a check that blesses your life. That was not your priority, but that was God's priority. Therefore, sometimes you just got to be available for God. Point number one, point number one, because I ain't going to hold you too long. You just give me like 10, 15 more minutes and we're going to get on up out of here. Matter of fact, I got 19 minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you, Montreal. <laughs> point number one, point number one, <laughs> point number one. There are some people that don't want us in our pregnant process. There are some people that don't want us in our pregnant process. Some people don't want you pregnant. 
Some people don't want some people don't want you to be uh, 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 with a blessing. <laughs> some folks don't want you pregnant with possibility. Some folks want you struggling. Some folks want you disenchanted. Some folks want you disconnected. Some folks want you disowned. Some folks want you to be an outcast. They don't want you pregnant in the process because if you're pregnant, that means you're going to bring forth something. Therefore, you don't need them the way that they want you to need them. And therefore, they don't want to be with a pregnant person. Some of us are pregnant in the process, but some folks don't want you because of your pregnancy. It's not that they don't think you cute. It's not that they don't think that the hair that you done bought is long enough. It's not that they don't think that you make enough money. It's none of that. It's because you are pregnant and because you're pregnant, that means you're not needy. And see, if you're pregnant and they're not the one who has impregnated you with the blessing, they don't want you. At the end of the day, you got to understand that some folks want you just because they want somebody to help. Do you realize that some people that are connected to you want to be your superhero? It's some people that like the superhero uh, uh, mantle. They want to carry that mantle. Dun, 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 dun. Here I am, Captain Cedric. <laughs> At your service. <coughs> That's the cape, y'all. The cape. I'm here. Dun, 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 dun. Some people don't. Some people don't want you once you get saved. There are some people who want you in your pity party. That's why they continue to allow for you to be in pity. Some folks don't want you to get delivered from your pittiness. They want you in your pity because if they you in your pity, that means they can serve you and at the same time present themselves as your superhero. Come on now, until you get a call. <laughs> You was without an automobile, as my grandma used to call it. <laughs> you were on the bus. They were calling and texting you all the time. You need a ride? You good? I was coming through your neighborhood. I just wanted to know if I could slide through and pick you up. You know, get you, did you still need to go to the store? <laughs> Soon as you get your car, no more texts, no more phone calls. You got to send out an APB through the sheriffs, the LAPD, the SWAT team, and everybody else to try to find out where they is. And I know that ain't proper English, and that's on the camera. I have to explain that to my mother. You don't know where they is because they, you can't find them because now you're not a charity case. See, Joseph thought that because Mary was pregnant with Jesus that she was then going to be talked about and treated as a charity case. That's why in the scriptures, the angel had to talk to Joseph and let him know, don't you take pity on Mary, because what Mary is carrying is going to transform and revolutionize the world. Therefore, you need to stay with Mary. All right. Because hmm. she's pregnant with your change agent. Hmm. Some folks don't want to stay with you because they know that the anointing is on you. Lord help us. <laughs> Some folks already see the anointing and sometimes you can't see it for yourself. <laughs> Some folks see the anointing and they know you blessed, but they don't want to call it out because they don't want you to know that you know that they know that you blessed. They want you to remain in that dummy state. You understand what I'm saying? Like you don't know who you are. <laughs> they don't want you to know that you're pregnant with possibilities and that you are pregnant with your purpose. Therefore, they want you to abort your pregnancy. Come on, now I'm teaching. Now, come on, y'all got to go with me. I got, I got 15 more minutes. I got 15, 15. <laughs> I'm going to give you this for free. Your pregnancy is not somebody else's priority. That's why God gave it to you. Don't nobody care about your business because it ain't their business. They'll continue to go over to somebody else in their business but won't support yours. The worst thing we can do in this, in, this, in this world is that we find ourselves supporting everybody else. But as soon as you get your business off the ground, all of a sudden they can't come to your business. But you know they like cookies and sweets. They continue to go on over there to Food for Less and get them old sorry cookies and sweets. But they won't come to KK Sweets and get their stuff. But see, they don't like the prices that you put on your stuff. But they'll run over to, they'll run over to uh, uh, Porto's. They'll run over to 
to that South and Beverly Hills and get them old high price cupcakes, but they won't come and get your cupcakes because some people do not want to put your pregnancy priority because it ain't theirs. Don't nobody care about your child and their education because it ain't their kid. <laughs> You got to care about your own kid <laughs> and what your own kid, because why? Because you brought forth that child. Yeah. You are pregnant and don't nobody want you in your pregnancy. Mm. Point number two. Point number two. Point number two. <laughs> Be aware that someone connected to you is pregnant with your next blessing. Some of us are like Joseph. We want to run away when we find out that somebody's pregnant. But you got to realize that you got to hang around with them people long enough because if they're pregnant, that means they're going to bring forth a blessing, and the blessing might be for you. But you don't run off and left your blessing because you don't want to be bothered with somebody who's in their pregnant state. Why don't you want to be bothered with somebody in their pregnant state? Well, I'm glad you asked because <laughs> I never will forget when uh, Lady Karen was pregnant. With, with the, we, we call them the trips, but they were actually quads. Most people don't know we had quads. We had two boys and two girls. Uh, and so it's always a bittersweet time for us on the 6th and 7th because Caitlin was born on the 7th. She was born on the same day with Khalid and Courtney. Uh, and Caitlin Janae is her name. And, and she was a sweet little thing. I think she would have been uh, a daddy's change agent, okay? Don't say nothing to Courtney because she gets really sensitive about that stuff. Because Courtney is daddy's girl, but I think Caitlin would have been daddy's little warrior chick. You know what I'm saying? She would have been a silent, she would have been that silent assassin. Just whatever she says is like monumental. You know what I'm saying? Like, go to sleep, daddy. Oh my God, did she just tell me to go rest in the spirit of the Lord? Is that what she's telling me? Shandala. <laughs> when Lady Karen was pregnant with the quads, she was on bed rest for two and a half months. Two and a half, two months, I always get it wrong. She was in the hospital, okay, <laughs> away from me. Three. <laughs> All right, so I still had to manage and get uh, Erica and Jonathan to school every day. But she would call me sometimes because she would be having uh, uh, issues with the pregnancy and the doctors would come in and they would be monitoring her and they'd be looking at her, taking blood, all this other kind of stuff. And one day she called me frantic <laughs> and she said, I need you to come to the hospital right now because I don't know what they're saying. I said, okay. I said, well, what do you mean you don't know what they're saying? She said, well, you went to school. you the biology major. They talking your talk and I need you to come to this hospital and explain to me what they're saying. I said, okay. Now, mind you, I was working in uh, Whittier, San no, Santa Fe. <laughs> and I had to race back from where I was working to the hospital because she was over at Long Beach Memorial Children's Hospital. I left that job so many times, Kenya, that they finally told me, because you are not uh, fully focused on the job, we don't think we need your services anymore. People don't want to be bothered with you and your pregnancy state because people don't want to lose what's, what's meaningful to them. Some people don't want to sacrifice. There's a sacrifice to being with someone who's pregnant because of the labor pains they suffer. So each labor pain that you go through with somebody that's pregnant, you may not feel the pain, but you're going to see the pain because it's going to result in you giving up something. Okay, some of y'all don't catch it. There would be times that she would have craving that I'd have to get up at like one, two o'clock in the morning and go to the store because she liked this little hot sauce thing. Uh, it was chilies or something. She would put on stuff, man. And I don't know what it was, man. She just, she was like, no, I need it. I need it right now. And she, her voice would actually change. <laughs> Lady Karen, how you see on the stage is very nice, very presentable. <laughs> Beautiful spirit. <laughs> but during that pregnancy and she would desire yeah. that little hot chili stuff. Go to the store. <laughs> get up so quick and just be putting on one time I walked in the grocery store I had on one tennis shoe that's how quickly I was trying to get up out the house 
because that voice changed on me and I couldn't handle it. Since I'm a tough dude, but when them voices be changed, I'm go to the store. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'll go right now. I went to the store, went down the aisle, I had the basket, and I just knocked all the chilies off the basket, off the shelf into my basket. The guy said, Is you find all you need? Yeah, I did. Hurry up and cash me out. Because I got to <laughs> hurry up, because she might catch me outside. Cash me out right now. Some people don't want to be bothered with you and your pregnancy because that means that you will, they will have to tend to you while you are in your pregnancy state. Some people are not patient with the blessing. That's why the, 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 the connection between mother and child over nine months is different because they've been laboring with each other to the point to where in they understand each other on a different level. Beware that sometimes we leave people before they've given birth and we don't understand why we are struggling in the position that we're in because there were some folks that you left too soon before the credits roll and they had your blessing. That's why you still stuck at the gate. So when you go through your mental, mo mental model and you figure out that there are some people that you left before you should have left because you were being impatient, those people were carrying your blessing that was going to propel you a lot further than where you would be right now, but you were so impatient and you thought that they were, thought that they were gonna bring shame to you, Joseph, that you wanted to leave and divorce yourself before you even engaged with them to figure out that they were carrying your blessing and the blessing that they were carrying was for your next. Now you stuck at the gate trying to get through your ship because your, 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 your ship would have come a lot earlier if you had just sat down and been patient. Be aware that there's somebody that is connected to you that has your next blessing. I don't know who that person is. I don't know where that person is. I don't know where you can find them, but there's somebody that's got the keys to your house. There's somebody that's got the keys to your next car. There's somebody that has an account waiting for you to just sign your name on the dotted line so that they can dump some funds into that new account. There's somebody that has your, has your business waiting for you. But if you're not patient in the pregnancy process, you'll leave before the baby is born. Mm -hmm. One of the joys that I have and I know they get tired of me telling it to them all the time. One of the joys that I have is that I was there for the birth of, of, of our four children. I wasn't there for Eric and Jonathan. It was kind of like I was there because I saw the tape. So I embellished that. I was there for all, all five of my children's birth. I embellish it. Don't worry about it. Don't tell nobody outside the walls, but it's on the camera. Whatever. Uh, uh, um, um, I was there. And I, the funny thing is that I take great joy in seeing Isaiah born. Isaiah was born at nine some at the night the Lakers were playing. That's when Shaquille O'Neal was still on the basketball team. Shaquille dunked, Isaiah slid out. Ba -ba! <laughs> <laughs> and I never will forget it. <laughs> the nurse came to me and she said, Daddy, do you want to cut the umbilical cord? I said, cut the umbilical cord on, on, on my son? And, and she said, yeah. I said, oh my God. Now you know, hospital scissors are sharper than household scissors. Yeah. And so when she gave me the scissors, it caught the light. I said, oh my God, this is like a switchblade that she gave me to cut this umbilical cord. She gave me the scissors. My hand was shaking so much. I said, Lord Jesus, please don't let me cut this child. This is my son. I don't want to cut his little baby's stomach. Let me just, she's like, no, go a little bit closer. I said, mm-mm. She said, go a little bit closer. I said, mm-mm. She said, go a little bit closer. I said, mm-mm. She said, here, Daddy, let me help you. I said, okay. <laughs> we cut the umbilical cord, and when I cut his umbilical cord, he cried a little bit, but then he looked at me, and I said, wow, I'm looking into the eyes of my legacy. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had been at a job, I could not have experienced that. If I had left Karen too soon because I was tired of her calling me, pulling me off my job, I wouldn't have seen that. Sometimes you got to be patient and wait because God will give you moments to where in you will see your, the birth of your blessing, but then you'll be able to experience because you'll get to touch it first. I don't know who that's for. 
Somebody needs to know that your blessing is on the way, but you got to be in the room when the person gives birth to you. <laughs> Don't be in the waiting room. You got to be in the room when the birth of your blessing is given. That way you will be the person that receives it. Point number three, point number three, start naming your next. Whatever your next is, start naming it. You notice that, you notice. Let's go to the text. I gotta go to the text for y'all because some, 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 some don't get it. Don't, don't, just, 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 here, go here, go here. We, look, look at Matthew, look, look, uh, 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 look at verse number 21. Verse number 21. She will bear a son and you, not Mary, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You got to name your next. What is it that you want next? And what is it that you want to come to pass in your life? If you know, if you don't name it, you can't claim it. Therefore, you don't have dominion over it. Going all the way back to Adam and Eve, what did, what did, what did, what did God tell Adam to do? Name the, the animals and the cattle and all of that because he was giving him what? Dominion, which means that he gave them rule, which means he gave him authority over those animals. Some of us are missing our necks because we haven't named it and because we haven't named it, we can't take control of it. And when we can't take control of it, that means we don't have dominion over it. And because we don't have dominion over it, that means sometimes our necks goes to the next person because we have not named it yet. Each one of my children was named with a purpose in mind. We just didn't give them frivolous names. We gave them names that would connect them to their future. Therefore, you got to be careful how you name certain things and how you name your next blessing. If you name your next blessing with a negative spirit, don't get mad when your blessing turns to be negative. What's your next? Name your next. Begin to name and understand that your next is coming. But if you don't name it, you can't have control of it. Don't just say, I want a job. I don't want a job. I don't mean no harm. I know we on camera. My job may be watching. I don't want a job. I want a career. I want something that gives me income to where in, even when I'm asleep at night, Anna, and I'm snoring real hard to where Lady Karen got the earbuds in, I'm still making change, which means money is still being dumped into my bank account. I don't want a job. I want a career that gives me that reverberating, uh, 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 what they call a residual income to where in, I don't even have to be there for it to happen. It just happens. I don't want a job. I want a career. I want a career to where in, when I'm dead and gone, my legs Legacy is still feasting off of the work that I put in today. Therefore, I don't want a job. I want something that lasts beyond me because the scriptures say that a man that is worth his salt provides for his children and his children's children to the point to where my great great grandchildren won't know who I am, but they'll be feasting off of the work that I put in today. At some point, you got to be sure that you name your next. What is your next? But why haven't you named it? Because then if you haven't named it, my question is, do you really want it? You want a house? Go find the house. <laughs> find the street that it's on. <laughs> well, stand outside of it and say, you know, Lord, <laughs> somebody's occupying my space right about now. Put the address in your prayers when you pray. You understand what I'm saying? Start praying differently. Start praying specifically about your next. See, if you don't ever know what your next is, don't get mad when you don't get it. Y'all know Lady Cameron talking about this four flex. She wore me out with the four flex. I said, you know what? At some point, I'm just going to take all my money out the bank. Here, Ford, get her the flex, man. <laughs> Go on, get her the flex. I don't care how much it costs. Just take it out of my account at night when I'm asleep so I can't see it. <laughs> Come like a thief in the night <laughs> and run through my account. <laughs> and just take it out, Lord. <laughs> if I could just have $5 because I got to go to Starbucks sometimes and give me that color macchiato upside down to get me kind of kick started. You understand? And so I, I got to get a banana nut loaf now. Come on. Leave me $7.50, Lord, in my account. You got to be specific about your next. 
You got to understand that you got to name what your next is. I was in a training this week to where in I said I wanted I wanted 52,000 square feet of property. Because that's where chosen generation is going to be built. That's where the Image Makers Academy that's going to help you to figure out who they are and design and how they are able to take creative skills, skills and become entrepreneurs. And Image Makers Academy is going to be on that 52,000 uh, square feet. That's where, that's where Legacy Bridge Community Development Corporation headquarters are going to be. So where we're going to be buying houses and building houses for single mothers and we're going to build a senior citizen house. We're going to buy up houses so that, so that people that really can't afford to be in one one can't afford to be in one. We're going to have Help Enhanced Community Resource Center to where we're going to deal with health and wellness and career development and education and we're going to deal with daily needs to where if somebody needs groceries, they can come to Help Enhanced Community Resource Center and get them some groceries. If they need to be trained on how to do an interview, they can come to Help Enhanced Community Resource Center and get trained. If they need a suit or a dress, if they need transportation, all they got to do is cover those 52 square feet and find what they need. And so I got to name the next because is coming. Amen. You carry a child for nine months, but sometimes you find yourself to where and they come early. <laughs> the trips were born in 27 and a half weeks. That was early. It wasn't supposed to come until February. They were born December 6th and 7th. Sometimes God will bring you your blessing early, but if you're not prepared to receive it, Be ready to name your next. As soon as she, as soon as we found out that we were having quads, I immediately started naming them babies. Each one of them had a name. They used to call them at the house. It was funny because they used to call them baby one, two, three, and four. <laughs> and when they say baby one, I was like, what is the position? I said, oh, that's Isaiah. <laughs> they say baby two. I'm like, well, who is that? That was uh, Caitlin. They say baby three. Khalid, because he was stretched out across the plains of, of, of Lady Karen's stomach. He took up a lot of space. Dude was just long. I said, that's Khalid. And then they said, oh, well, baby four is up here. She's had a little attitude. I said, oh, that's Courtney right there. We gave them names. We didn't call them baby one, two, three, four. We gave them their names because their names were going to signify what they were going to do in this atmosphere. So you got to realize that God has a blessing that he's trying to give you in the spiritual realm. He can't dispense it into the natural realm because you haven't given a name to it. As soon as you give a name to to it in the natural realm. He drops it on you from the spiritual realm because now he knows that you're ready to control it, that you're ready to have dominion over it. Therefore, he has to utter it through you. Fourth and final point. Fourth and final point. What's my time, Montreal? I ran out of time. Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. give me about two, three more minutes. Point number four. The community will know us by our offspring. The community will know us by our offspring. What are you ready to give birth to? Chosen generation in this season is going to be a social enterprise ministry, which means that we want to help people create businesses that God has put in your heart that the world has not recognized. What is it that God has put in your, in your spirit? A few years ago, Sister Kenya came to me. She said, Pastor, I'm sick of trying to find a job with somebody. I want to create my own thing. She said, I want to do taxes. I connected her with a friend of mine who happens to do our taxes and sent her over there. I called him. I said, Gregory, I'm sending somebody your way that wants to start a tax business. I need you to train them for me. She's been over there ever since, and she started her tax business. Those are the kind of things that I want chosen generation to do because we are not a church. We are a ministry. Therefore, what is the enterprise that God has laid on your heart? Is it that you want to be a daycare provider? We're going to help you get that started. Do you want to have a coffee shop? We're going to help you get that started. Do you want to do hair? We're going to help you get that started. Whatever it is that you want to do, we're going to help you get it started because the offspring is what's going to speak to the community. This community got needs. And we got to stop going to the government. We got to stop looking at politicians. We got to stop looking at the next man or woman and look at ourselves. What are you going to do to answer the needs of the community? Brother James wants to be influential in the political scene. I'm going to help him get there. If that's what he wants to do, that's what he's going to do. 
Whatever it is, if he wants to start his own financial, that's what it's going to be. And that's what I'm going to help him do. Because it's not my job to try to figure out if God has given you that. It's your job to figure out how God is going to work it out in your life. But I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to end it. You pregnant with something, but until you push, it ain't going to be delivered. Mm. Ain't going to be delivered. To my young people, you want an A on the test? If you don't study, it ain't going to be delivered. You want a new job? Until you apply for some places, you ain't going to get the new job. Mm. Well. You want a new place to live? Until you go looking for a spot, you ain't going to live there. You want your own transportation until you walk on the lot and become an OG like Lady K and tell the people, this is what I want. I ain't leaving here until I get it. All right, then, Godfather. <laughs> we banging on wax. He was up in there, crib walking and everything else. <laughs> this is on 108 to Denver. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Don't make me call my brother. What you got the community needs and until the, until you do it, the community is going to be scarce because you haven't given birth to what they need. God can't use you if you're not in a pregnancy state. And once you deliver one thing, he's going to give you something else so that you will begin to be pregnant at a level to where in you won't even have to worry about how many times you got to push because whatever he puts inside of you is going to bring forth blessings. Mm -hmm. What is it that you got to deliver that you've been pregnant with too long? The young people need what you got. It gives me great joy to be able to go and do what I do. And I walked on to Sean's son's campus and I get a text from Sean saying, my son saw you on his campus today and he was excited. Because I'm doing something to help out the next generation. No, I don't have children in the school system right now. But I got some babies in this church who going to need my voice. And I'm going to keep on speaking and keep on fighting on their behalf. Because they may not be my biological babies, but they my babies. And I got to keep fighting for them. There's some folks in here who going to need... They gonna, you're going to need some bank accounts. You're going to need some credit checks. I'm trying to position myself so that so that when you walk into the bank, all you got to do is say, I'm from Chosen Generation, and I know Pastor Cedric. Mm -hmm. We setting it up. I ain't saying that because I want to get the glory. I'm saying that because I'm trying to put all my character and all my chips on the table so that so that you can get what it is that you need to be successful. And if God wants me to be the Nehemiah that stands on the wall and continues to build the wall, then I'm going to stay on the wall and I ain't coming down. And I don't want to be like Joseph to where I leave before you all give birth to the blessing that God has placed inside of you. So this week, don't leave before the credits. Understand, God got something for you. But if you quit now, you won't know how the story ends. Hang in there. Realize that it's just a story and that God has you in it. And you don't even have to be the superhero because he sent Jesus to be the hero in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for doing exactly what you have done. Allow for us to understand that we cannot leave before the credits. We cannot go and, and think about and do what Joseph was thinking about. We know that we are pregnant. We know that we know people that are pregnant. And at some point, Heavenly Father, we got to stay in there because our next needs a name because our next is what's going to transform our community. Thank you, Lord, for impregnating us with what you've given us. Now allow for us to bring it forth this week so that it can grow so that it can take, take hold and so that it can be used by you to transform everything that it touches. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen.